my name's Harold. I was uh, sitting there thinking about last year, or maybe it was year before last, sometime recently, when uh, people were having all the runaway Toyotas, you know, accelerator pedals stuck to the floor. And I've got two of their products, and I thought, well, it didn't seem to make much sense to me how anybody could have a car go runaway whether the accelerator was stuck down or not because, uh, well, you can put it in neutral, you know, and steer, coast your way over the side of the road, turn off the key. And I tried that driving with, uh, with both the Toyota products I got, and uh, worked fine, you know. And I don't remember anybody in all the investigations of this or anything, I don't remember hearing them ask, well, why didn't you just put your car in neutral and coast off to the side of the road? I mean, you had people on 911 emergency calls, and they were, <coughs> excuse me, they were all freaked out, and I don't remember anybody saying anything about just put it in neutral. I, did I miss something there? You guys can tell me in the comments if, if all that was done and I just didn't notice. Uh, I've been working more outside this week than inside. I went out uh, yesterday little bit before dark and cleaned up a whole bunch of limbs. I'm trying to cut down a crepe myrtle that's probably about 30 feet tall. And this afternoon I'll go out and finish it, but uh, what I'm working on that you guys more likely to be interested in is I'm going to do a little readjustment on my DRO, the Z-axis, on my uh, Grizzly Mill because it's just a little bit too shaky with the, the linkage I've got on it. In fact, I, put, I attached it to the wrong place. I attach it on a little plastic nut that's on the screw that's supposed to do the stop, you know, for and really I should have put some somewhere more solid, so I'm gonna take care of that. And then I want a camera mount for my lathe so I can just stick it up and it'll be out of my way and it'll look down at what's going on. So there's those two things to do. And then I've got a little story, uh, I'll uh, I'll tell you that too. Back in the uh, 50s and I guess 60s maybe, there was a comedian around who called himself Brother Dave Gardner. And he uh, he said people asked him what was the difference between him and all those other preachers. And he said, well, they was preaching against it and he was preaching for it. So hey, that's, that's what he said. And he, he used to tell a story about a South Alabama boy that was an Elvis fan. He... Uh, he, he learned that Elvis had a couple of motorcycles with sidecars on them, so he got himself a, a big old motorcycle with a sidecar on the side because he wanted to be like Elvis. And uh, his name was Chuck. And he had sideburns, you know, come down the side. And he had his hair and a duck tail in the back, which you younger people can go look that up. And he had a leather jacket with zippers on the sleeves and zippers on the pockets and zippers on the cuff and, you know, and of course a zipper up the middle. And he had shoes with, uh, he had those motorcycle boots on, you know, what they call Wellingtons some places. And uh, had taps on the heels, you know, so he could strike sparks on the ground when he walked along. And he had a girlfriend, her name was Miss Baby, and she, she looked just like Chuck. So uh, one evening they're finishing up down at the local drive-in, you know, finishing up a hamburger. Decided to go for a little ride, you know, up in the country. Miss Baby says, Chuck, Chuck, she says, uh. You know, I'm not sitting on the buddy seat in the morning after you got your sidecar. She said, I'm sitting over here and I'm cold. She said, wind blowing right on me. Chuck says, oh, he says, I'll, I'll take care of that. He says, that ain't no big problem. He says, give me your jacket. She took her jacket off and he turned around, put it on her backwards, reached on the back and zipped it up. And he says, now the wind can't get to you. He says, you, you'll be nice and warm. So, you know, Miss Baby's happy. They take on off down the road and they're getting out of town. They're out on a hill. You know, going going up behind a big old D flat double clutching semi trailer truck, you know, and it's going up the hill like that. And it's got a sign on the back of it that says, I may be slow, but I'm ahead of you. And that was just more than Chuck he could bear, you know. Old Chuck he just he twisted that throttle almost off the hand grip and down and past that truck he went. And of course it might not have been a good thing they're on a two lane blacktop road there, but he goes zooming up past that truck. And right then, the car comes over the hill, and boom, they hit head on, you know, and 
teeth, hair, and eyeballs all over the road, you know, it's just a big mess. And a little bit here come the cops, you know, in their car, they're all hunched over the steering wheel, and they zoom up there, and they get out, and they, they walk out there like they got sword in their armpits, you know, their arms kind of like that. And they look down, you know, and there's a couple of guys there all ready to scene, and, and the cop says, all right, tell me, punk, uh, what's, what's happened to these lovely children? And, and the boy there says, well, I'm, I'm Mr. Officer, and he slapped me, you know, like that, and he says, don't lie to me, punk. He says, I want to know what happened to these lovely children. And uh, he says, well, Mr. Oster, he says, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. He says, uh, Mr. Chuck, he was killed outright. He says, but Miss Baby, she seemed kind of all right until me and Junior turned her head around. All right, let's, uh, let's go work on the mill. This is kind of like an unfinished job here. This, uh, it looks pretty solid and it feels pretty solid, but it's actually got a joint and a joint, you know, and, and it could move. So I got some uh, aluminum rods that I can braise this with to make it pretty well solid. And the main clue of this thing being that I won't, uh, won't let it get misaligned, you know. Uh, this, this one can stay bolted together nice and it probably won't move, but this one is held together by the a bolt that runs through the scale. And uh, it may be somewhat harder to, to handle. I'll move this around and sort of zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, inside there is the is a bolt that goes all the way through that scale there. And that may that may cause me some troubles, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to disassemble it and raise it up solid and then I'm gonna come around here where I've got this little arm here. Zoom in on that where you can see it good. And I'm going to try to replace it with an arm that connects right down here. Because this is more solid than, than the spot that I connected it there. I get a little jitter from this thing and, it, and I don't feel secure about it that I'm getting the right reading. So that's, that's my project for today. We interrupt this show to give you a public service message here. This, uh, Father's Day present. You can see how the holes are made here to put the screw in there and shove this down on it. And then when you roll it over, you can see that all the all the writing's upside down when you do it like that. I think that the, the guy at the factory, I guess he wasn't thinking about it exactly right. Well, I can't run the camera and do this, but there's the uh, first seam welded up right there with a little aluminum brazing rods. Whoa, losing focus. Okay, I'll move on. Now that stuff's really hot, but uh, I think maybe it's stuck fairly good there. And with any luck, I've got it actually braised together where it'll be real solid. All right, I want to mount the support here to the scale here on this piece. And this little guy that goes on the bottom here, he was just, uh, where is it? Here he is. He was just long enough to go through the metal and have enough threads left to uh, put the lock nut on. So I machined off portion of it here, about a washer's thickness I suppose, so it can go up in there, still lock down on the lock nut, and I can weld an arm onto here, this is just a washer I had left over from something else I did, I can weld onto here a piece of this, and uh, run it up to be the arm that runs the, uh, the little DRO scale up and down. And if I get through with all that, maybe I can go out in the backyard and cut, cut up some tree limbs and stuff. I got a bunch of that to do. All right, I'm set up there to fasten those two pieces of metal together. I'll, I may braise it, and then again, I might fusion weld it. I'll, I'll probably decide that at the last second when I get there. But. Uh, 
that's the setup and I'm not going to try to do it on camera you've seen plenty of brazing and welding well this is another day of course I've indicated the thing in up and down and on you know both sides and it's it's pretty straight so now I've got this little guy here that I welded up and painted and it's almost a grizzly green so I'll bolt it on there and then we'll come back and see how it looks all right so other than maybe the last digit we get pretty steady increments now it's uh, that's a lot better than the last bracket that I had was doing it's sitting there just as solid as can be now a little bit of jitter but this thing vibrates all over so that's a hundred percent better than it was now I had forgotten about what the other thing was that was to make a a camera bracket to go here on top of my lathe and put a camera camera bracket right up there so that's my next job and I'll have to look around here and see what kind of material I've got to make it from. So there's a view of the chuck with the brand spanking new camera mount here that used to be part of a uh, lawnmower's uh, mulching attachment. There it is back at a distance. I screwed it on there it's a little arm that sticks over. And I've got this little screw that comes through this piece of plastic. I need to get a screw that'll stay up there all the time, one with a little clip on it. And I think I can find that, but uh, not today. So I think that's all the little jobs I had out here today. And just in case you didn't get a good view of the, the new bracket, there it is. Uh, not the most perfect and beautiful bends, but trying to make it fit there is not that easy a job. And it's securely fastened now instead of being on this this fluffy little screw there. That was a bad spot for it. Yesterday when I didn't have anything better to do, long about dark I came out and cleaned up a pile of limbs like that and turned the big pieces into pile there and I'm trying to get rid of that crepe myrtle right there now all I've got left is to get that one tall skinny limb cut down and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut her down so she's about a bush size because these trees right here need some light and it was covering them up so they, you can see how they were growing leaning over trying to get some light well now they're gonna they're gonna have a better chance they're fruit trees and the crepe myrtle is just flowers. At the end of every video I always ask you to subscribe and what the, the deal is with the subscribing is if you subscribe it sort of sets in motion the gears that I can uh, let you know when I've got another video up and it tells me that you, you might have liked it enough to come back and see something again. Now if you do subscribe and you click on that subscribe button you'll notice right beside it there's a little gear and right there I've circled it with red and you need to click that little gear because YouTube doesn't automatically notify you just because you subscribe you need to tell YouTube that you want uh, you want them to notify you every time I upload something new and then you'll get a little email and they'll tell you hey he's put something new up there and uh, always ask for comments and comments are the very best way for me to find out if I'm doing anything right. The like button is nice and all like that, but uh, you could have clicked the like button and I don't know what you liked about it, you know. But if you say, uh, I liked this or I didn't like that, well, that kind of steers me in some direction. Besides, I like hearing from people anyway. So, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe please. And... Uh, if you got something to say, go ahead and say it. I'm I'm always happy to hear it. Y'all come back now.